Severe weather for some tonight. I'll have the details coming up. Drivers going dangerous speeds in Oklahoma, how law enforcement is cracking down. And a rally at the state capitol over the future of public education in Oklahoma. Here from both sides. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Bailey Coyle. And I'm Parker Abels. We begin tonight with a chance of severe weather and a fire weather warning. OU Nightly meteorologist Eli Miller is tracking several severe weather warnings across Oklahoma in his life on the South Oval with more. Eli. Yeah, we had a cloudy and humid start to the day. The sun did not make an appearance, but we did just have some showers roll through Norman, leaving campus pretty wet. I was able to remain relatively dry because I was sitting here under a roof. None of it was severe, but we still do have a severe weather chance going into tonight. A marginal risk for much of the state, stretching from Lawton all the way up into Miami. And let's check out what this looks like on radar. We do have storms rolling through just now into Tulsa, stretching all the way down to Durant. And if you zoom in here into Norman, we are clearing out. But we do have some stuff developing towards our southwest, uh, so we could still see some rain going into later tonight. But if once we go into weather headlines, what I'm talking about coming up in weather is our severe weather chance going into tonight and later on next week, and also a fire alert chance coming into this weekend, and also we're tracking our next system coming up here in weather. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Eli. Busy day at the state capitol with topics of school choice at the center of debate. OU Nightly's Carolyn Felling joins us live from the newsroom with more. Carolyn. That's right, teachers, parents, and lawmakers on both sides of House Bill 1935 were all making their voices heard. Those for the bill says it gives parents more power to choose, while the other side says it is reckless. We believe in school choice, okay? Hundreds of Oklahomans gathered at the state capitol showing their support for House Bill 1935. I will never stop fighting for you to give you that option to put your kid and your child where it better fits their needs. The Senate made some changes to the bill earlier this week. The current bill would offer $7,500 in tax credits for private school students and $1,000 for homeschooled students. It also limits credit to households that make $250,000 a year or less. And inside on the Senate floor. Schools are not failing. The legislature is failing our obligation to the schools. Lawmakers opposing the bill say the plan is expensive, has no accountability, and undermines Oklahoma public schools. We know that academically, nationally, we rank in the mid-30s range. Our teachers have done more with less. And what we are seeing right now is that is unsustainable. Now the bill did pass on the Senate floor this morning with a 40 to 7 vote on party lines. It now heads back to the House for more consideration. Bailey Parker, back to you. In a post-pandemic Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Highway Patrol says it's seeing an increase in dangerous speeding violation. OU Nightly's Reed Lindsay met with Trooper Eric Foster about how OHP is addressing the problem. Oklahoma Highway Patrol has recently been dealing with a speeding issue. We do see uh, daily uh, vehicles going over 100 miles an hour. High speeds increase lethality. As a trooper, I may see a crash that, that may have ended up in bumps and bruises with a 60 miles an hour crash. But at 100, when something goes wrong, uh, very rarely are you able to get out of that without major, major injury. This means drivers should be more vigilant on turnpikes and interstates. On roadways where, uh, on roadways where the speed limits are higher, the uh, propensity of a great bodily injury crash when there is a collision is really high. This kind of speeding is a big deal, and it's getting worse. Obviously, uh, it's against the law number one, and if you're being reckless in it, then it can turn into a criminal act and and not just a traffic act. Notifying your local officers can also save lives. You see something that is reckless, always call 911. Uh, always notify law enforcement because we have law enforcement stationed everywhere and we can be 
uh, looking out for that vehicle. And you have no idea that how many times we get a call of a, a person driving reckless, and then later they were involved in a collision. In Norman, Reed Lindsay, go United. Trooper Foster says that Oklahoma's emergency call system is set up to handle dangerous driving calls and if you see a driver going dangerous speeds, to call 911. Army officials confirm nine soldiers are dead after two helicopters with the 101st Airborne Division crashed in southwestern Kentucky. CNN's Mike Valerio has the story. At approximately 10 p.m. last night, two of our Black Hawk helicopters were involved in a crash during a planned training flight in Katy's, Kentucky that resulted in the death of all nine service members. Officials say two crews, four and five members each, were aboard two HH-60 Black Hawk helicopters conducting routine night training ops. Specifically, they were flying a multi-ship formation, two ships under night vision goggles. When you're talking about night vision goggles, when you're flying an aircraft, and I'll demonstrate, pardon me for this, but you have two goggles like this in front of your face, and that's where you can see using the illumination from whatever is out there, stars, moonlight. Unknown yet if visibility was a factor. The exact cause is under investigation. One witness shared what he heard with a local radio station. As soon as they got over the house, something popped, loud, loud bang, and everything shut down just all of a sudden. We have a safety team coming from Fort Rucker, Alabama, who specialize in aircraft safety and specifically these investigations. Last month, a Black Hawk crashed in Huntsville, Alabama during training, killing both National Guardsmen on board. We will always relook our safety precautions and our measures. The grim task now notifying the families of the nine soldiers killed Wednesday night. Freedom relies on those who are willing to serve, some of which pay the ultimate price. In Trigg County, Kentucky, I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Overall, the Army has averaged five deaths per year in on-duty aviation mishaps since 2018, according to the U.S. Army Combat Readiness Center. But pets are known for protecting babies and harmful things. And after the break, learn what a new study says pets are now protecting babies from. And Johnson & Johnson may be halting their development on a specific vaccine. When we come back, we'll tell you which one and who it may affect. A vaccine for a common disease is halting development. Snowforth has that and more in today's Health Beat. Yeah, Parker, Johnson & Johnson is stopping the development of its RSV vaccine. The vaccination for the common respiratory infection was being tested to see if it could prevent the potentially serious disease in adults over the age of 60. The company says it's ending the trial after an assessment of the RSV vaccine landscape. And emergency room visits due to firearms dropped last year, but the numbers are still higher than before the pandemic. The CDC says the weekly number of ER visits related to firearm injuries started rising in March 2020. Rates began sharply increasing that May and remained higher until last year. In 2022, the rate was 20 percent higher than in 2019. And for all the pet owners, your furry friend in the home could lower a child's chance of developing a food allergy. According to a new study, babies exposed to cats or indoor dogs have a 16% lower chance of developing food allergies compared to babies in pet-free homes. Experts say pet exposure may strengthen an infant's gut health. Parker Bailey, I had a cat growing up and I don't have any food allergies, so this is actually true for me. What about you two? Well, I was actually allergic to cats growing up, so I, I don't know if that helps me. I did have some dogs, though. I had a four-pound Pomeranian, and I don't have any food allergies, so I say it worked for me. Well, students at OU are going big this weekend. Coming up, learn how you can help join students in giving back to the community. And we've had some quick drizzles on campus today and some severe weather on the way. Eli, how are those storms looking? 
Now, we do have a severe weather chance for some folks. We also have a fire weather chance going into this weekend. I'll talk about that all coming up in weather. But welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. Campus looking dreary and wet. Luckily, some students walking back from class. It's no longer raining on them anymore. We're sitting in the lower 60s. Our dew point is at 59, so it is pretty moist outside. Even some mist falling from the sky. And looking across the state, current temperatures, we're seeing 60s. Even some upper 60s pushing 70s near Miami. And out in Guymon, they're out behind that dry land. They're pushing 80s out there. And those wind gusts sitting about 20 to 25 miles an hour. And like I said, that wire behind that dry line sitting in the 40s for wind gusts. Now we're going to talk about that severe weather outlook going into tonight. It is a marginal risk. It's a bit lower than we've seen because we do have a cap in place. I'll explain what that is coming up here. But that risk uh, goes from all the way down to Lawton, even northern central Texas, and all the way up towards Miami. Uh, but looking at satellite, we do see a lot of clouds out in the sky, but you see the storms that were off towards our east that rolled through Norman. You can see them popping up on that satellite. So what exactly is a cap? So basically a cap is a warmer layer above a cooler. So we have a cooler layer at the surface and a warmer layer, a warmer layer aloft. And that warmer air, you know, warm air rises, cold air sinks. So that air is not being able to be pushed up and create storms. The only way that we can really break this, well, there's several ways to break this, but one we were looking for today was warming the surface where you warm that layer below to equal, equal or even greater that temperature aloft. And that, would be, that was how uh, storms would be able to initiate. We haven't quite seen that just yet today. That's why storms are not severe just yet. But going into tonight, we're sitting at 63 by 4 p.m. We're going to even warm up going into midnight, 66 winds out of the south. That's, when it, that's what's going to warm us up, 22 miles an hour. Now looking at lowest night, mild, a mild night tonight here, 60s across the state, some 50s out in Elk City, and Guymon, once again, the outlier sitting at 41. They're sitting about normal. Winds out of the southwest at 25 miles an hour. And then highs tomorrow, looking beautiful. We're clearing out, 70s across the state, 71 in Elk City, and then Guymon, like I said, 66 degrees. But going into Friday, we are going to have a fire weather risk. Here comes that dry line from the west. It's eastbound and down. These are, this is our relative humidity. We're sitting at about 23% here in Norman, and our winds are going to be kicking. So we're going to have, if something, if you throw a match on the, throw a cigarette out of your car and it goes in the grass, it's going to catch and it's going to fly. So it, we're at an extreme risk for par part of the state, especially out in western Oklahoma. And then, like I said, going into Saturday, we're, so we're still dry as well, so there is a risk Saturday into Sunday. And then by the time we get into Sunday, we're getting a little, little wetter, a little more moist. And because of that, we do have a fire weather warning covering, covering much of the state. And that is going to be in Norman until about 10 p.m. tomorrow. And then going into Friday as well, we still have a severe weather outlook. Much of Oklahoma kind of missing out on it, except for far, far southeastern Oklahoma. We're looking at Ida Bell. And northeastern Arkansas and southeastern Iowa, they're seeing some severe weather and all modes are possible. So we expect something serious going into tomorrow. So looking at our air mass forecast here, there's that first cold front that rolls through Saturday. It's coming through. And then it's going to be a pretty active pattern. Here comes our next storm system with a tailing cold front. That's Tuesday. We're going to, we were going to be sitting in the 80s and we're going to cool down into the 60s because of that. And then later on to next Thursday, there's our next weather maker next Thursday. Now our seven day forecast, 70s, there's that chance of rain Friday morning overnight. We're looking at 70s next week. Like I said, 80s, and then by Wednesday, we're back into the 60s. Parker, Bailey, back to you. Thanks, Eli. OU's biggest community service event is this Saturday. The big event sends students around Norman, Oklahoma City, and Edmond to help with jobs such as painting, planning, and picking up trash. Volunteers say this event is the day for OU community to come together and serve a bigger purpose. It's a one day that all of us can get together. We can come together for a common goal to serve our community. Um, and it really just bonds us closer together. Um, and you're able to serve your community. You're able to get a free t-shirt and a free lunch. So, um, and you get to meet a lot of new people. This year, the big event includes more than 175 job sites. To sign up, volunteer, visit ou.edu slash big event. Well, Bailey, the women's gymnastics team starts their road to a national championship today. Yes, they do. And Kaylee Joe Hommel tells us more in sports. Kaylee. 
OU Women's Gym returns tonight right here in Norman, and one of OU Knightley's very own caught up with some NFL hopeful Sooners. This and more coming up in sports. Hello, I'm Kaylee Jo Hommel, and it's time for sports. Some former Sooners showed up and showed out at today's Pro Day. OU Knightley's Jimmy Wicks was there and has the details. Pro Day at big programs like Oklahoma, this is where dreams and money are made. A few Sooners made quite the impression today. Trey Morrison repped 225 19 times on the bench press and almost 40 inches on his vertical. Deshaun White had a 9 foot 9 inch vertical, and Anton Harrison tested well in individual position drills in front of NFL scouts. And now all the hard work is done and the wait is almost over. And in 28 days, these Sooners are waiting for one thing, the phone call that will change all their lives. Eric Gray is one such example. It was a dream come true being out here in Pro Day. I just can't remember myself thinking about all week about last year when I was sitting here, you know, watching the other guys go through this drill for it to be fast forward. And in my time, I felt like it was a great day for me. I came out here and did what I wanted to do, so it was a dream come true for me. For these prospects, this is their last opportunity to make impressions in front of scouts and NFL GMs. Potential day one pick Anton Harrison was thrilled about his performance here today. Uh, I do. Um, I feel pretty good. Uh, right now it's just in God's hands. Uh, just God with me, just believing in myself, keep working. I got interviews and meetings, keep preparing for that, just being ready. OU Women's Gymnastics is taking home floor advantage as they host the NCAA Regionals. On deck tonight, a meet against Ohio State, Arkansas, and NC State. The competition begins at 6.45 p.m. at the LNC. As for another number one ranked team, Oklahoma softball returns for a championship rematch. The Red River Showdown against Texas pitches off at 6 p.m. Friday at the Hall of Fame Complex. And OU Baseball is back home tonight to face number seven ranked Stanford. This comes after dropping Tuesday's midweek Wichita State game. The Thunder bounced back last night versus the Pistons by one point. With less than a second left, rookie Jalen Williams hit the game-winning tip-in, bringing the final score to 107-106. to Williams weighed in on the close game. Especially being the youngest team in the NBA, the more you can get in these situations, the more that you can kind of grow from and learn from. Obviously tonight, I think we did a lot of stuff well down the stretch that kind of led to the, obviously the lane at the end. But um, yeah, not focusing on that, but I think the way we were able to manage the clock and kind of go through all that, a lot of little stuff kind of built up for us to kind of be able to get that last possession. Parker Bailey, did you catch the game last night? I actually did, Kaylee, and I was there, and I watched the buzzer beater tip in, and it was incredible. The Paycom Center was electric. That might have been one of the most excited I've seen the Thunder fans at the game since maybe the Russell Westbrook days. Hmm. Well, I was not at the game, but I have heard all about it. Well, NASA has recorded a new type of space blast. Find out what makes this explosion so unique when we return. I'm Becca Yanez at the OU Knightley Update Desk. Breaking up this hour, a Manhattan grand jury just voted to indict former President Donald Trump. He now becomes the first former president to ever face criminal charges. Specific charges have not been released yet, but the case is connected to alleged hush money payments made in 2016 to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Bailey, Parker, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Becca. Well, NASA is studying one of the most powerful types of explosions in the universe. It's a gamma wave burst, but NASA is calling it not the goat, but the boat, brightest of all time. Scientists believe the radiation from the blast was so exponential that it blinded most of the instruments in space. NASA thinks this type of blast is so rare, it happens once every 10,000 years and comes from the formation of black holes. And now we have one last look at our severe weather chances, Eli. Yeah, we have some severe chances going into tonight, but tomorrow is looking like a much bigger day. Uh, southeastern parts of Oklahoma are seeing a slight risk. And then tomorrow out in western Oklahoma, much drier, a red flag warning for covering much of the state. And then seven-day forecast, we're moving into April, our windiest month. You can see it on the seven-day. Bailey, Parker, back to you. 
Thanks, Eli, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Bailey Coyle. And I'm Parker Abels. Be sure to turn, tune in to OU Nightly every weekday live at 4.30. Good night.